Cheers and welcome back to another studio vlog. I hope that you have had a wonderful week. Happy May. Today is the first day of May. It is May Day <laughs> and I am so feeling it today. The, the nice rush of energy. It is even more so spring here in the San Francisco Bay Area and I am loving it. I can hear people outside. It is Saturday so people are enjoying their weekend and I think a lot of us here in America are feeling more hopeful a little bit dare I say uh, with uh, the vaccination process starting to uh, take effect more and more I had my second shot on Monday I am so so grateful and I was super sick <laughs> the day after uh, had a fever and everything but it was 24 hours as it seems to be the average side effect uh, and now I am doing a-okay so I'm so grateful I have a couple or more weeks a week and a half ish until I am in the clear so to speak um, you know I know all the all the sciencey stuff too but I am looking forward to going up and seeing my family for the first time in a long time long stretch for us um, and yeah, just starting to see friends who have also been vaccinated as well and all of that. So feeling very hopeful this first day of May. But I do have this week some things to share with you. A finished sweater. Uh, I'm going to share what I'm wearing today for it is the beginning of Me Made May, which is a fun uh, annual tradition now. Uh, and an update on the sock that I cast on with you all last week, as well as a look ahead at what I want to cast on next knitting wise. And yeah, let's just jump right into it. First of all, a huge thank you to everybody who showed up today. This morning I had the May shop update. So thank you all so much for your orders and for your excitement about the bags. I am so grateful, continue to be so humbled and grateful for you all. So thank you. Uh, so it has been quite busy the last few days, especially getting things ready and prepared and uh, early mornings and pretty much nonstop getting all the logistical things done. So I'm taking a little bit of a breather this afternoon and, and taking, taking a slower speed before things pick up again and I work on getting your orders out the door. Uh, before I show you my finished sweater, I wanted to share a finished sweater or cardigan from last year. Many of you, if you've been watching for a while, will have seen this last year. This is the Ochre Cardigan by Amba O'Brien. And I made this out of uh, Trailhead Yarns and Fiber Badlands, which is a Euroflex linen. It's so, so wonderful and it's getting softer and softer the more that I wear it. I was gifted this beautiful um, yarn, which is in a colorway called Fifi Island um, a couple of years ago. And I had made another sweater, actually another pullover using it, but it was way too big. I had made, I think I had cast on like maybe two sizes too large. Plus the shaping of it just wasn't really what I wanted in, in the end. So I took it out and landed on this beautiful pattern and it is beautiful. And I believe that Amp O'Brien now has a pullover version of this beautiful sweater. And I love the detail on the sleeve, like this like lace work is so pretty. So I actually wove in, you will have seen probably, I wove in the ends <laughs> this morning when I was on a Zoom chat and um, you know, sometimes it it takes a year for you to weave in your ends. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to wearing it. The weather is perfect to wear it outside. It's uh, warm enough. It actually, it needs warmer weather for this cardigan. Um, and it's still pretty chilly, especially in the morning. So that we had like, we're getting a lot of marine fog coming in. So like our San Francisco summers are starting to arrive, which means it's sweater weather. <laughs> But yeah, so that is what I am wearing today. 
And I did mention Me Made May. I will be loosely taking part of it in it this year, sharing what I'm wearing each day or every other day whenever I can remember over on Instagram stories. So make sure to follow over there. And what I've made in the past, maybe what I've just recently finished. So enough teasing. I know many of you have been on this journey since I cast this on at the end of January, I believe. And that is the Tender Sweater by Melody Hoffman using gorgeous yarn by the Royal Bee Yarn Company. All of the details are down below in the description box. And without further ado, do do here it is yay so here it is i of course can't show you in all of its glory right here so here it is on and i am modeling it i absolutely adore this sweater this is my new go-to cozy comfort sweater which is exactly what i wanted a nice loose fitting drop shoulder which is my jam sweater and this cozy beautiful fine merino yarn it will hopefully knock on wood last a lifetime i loosely blocked it or lightly blocked it rather with uh, just some damp rags um, i might do another spin around doing that again or do it once again but i don't want it to grow too much because it fits perfectly and it'll grow naturally as i wear it the sleeves turned out great. I love the length of them. I actually really love the kind of detail that you can see from the decreasing. Um, it kind of adds a real beauty to it. And I did use the darker skein of yarn, which was the last skein of yarn that I had uh, for the cuffs. And you will see also uh, for the collar as well, which is a just one by one rib as well as on the hem as well and the cuff and i love it it just adds a nice frame to the face and it looks like just very intentional and purposeful it took me a little while to get the stitches picked up for the collar and that just was because i wasn't sure if i wanted to pick up every single stitch or every other stitch which i do sometimes just to kind of even things out and after a couple of times starting from the right shoulder and going around and getting to right about here mid <laughs> collar in the front i went nope i have too little or oh i think i always had too little i never had too much so i ended up just not even looking at the numbers in the pattern of how many i was supposed to have on the needles and just doing every stitch and just making it as even as i wanted to and it turned out perfectly it made me think you know i haven't really picked up stitches for a collar like this in a while and how i kind of wish i can't remember if it usually says in patterns sometimes like you need to pick up every other stitch or i guess it just depends on the pattern and the designer's preference and it kind of made me realize like you know I need to make sure I, i'm still learning and i need to and i'm still finding um, trusting the, my confidence in what I have learned and what I know knitting wise um, and also just reminding myself that I can always take it out like it does you do put time in and of course especially at the very end of a project you really just want to like pick up the stitches and get it done but you know I did it a couple of times and I kept learning and it was a process I loved the process so that's what I love about knitting is like you may be ready to get it done but sometimes it reminds you it's a creative process that reminds you to slow down and learn the lessons that you need to learn <laughs> whether you want to or not I really love the detail on the front on how I picked up the stitches just on the side here so I get this nice like kind of like little braid which is really lovely and I'm really glad that I didn't add any length on it. It's a little bit more cropped, even though it's not really a cropped sweater than what I usually wear, but I love it because I will be layering probably the majority of the time, if not all the time that I'm wearing this sweater. So it's perfect. I'll always have like a top like I was today sticking out of the bottom in some way. Um, what else? I, I did kind of mention, I think it was on this sleeve. See, the fact that I can't even see, notice it. Um, 
I think I was, I think it is this one. I started a slightly lighter skein of yarn and I, you can't really tell. So thank you all. Some of you wrote me and said, don't even worry about it. I can't really tell. So I was worried that the color differences in the hand dyed yarn was going to show, but it, it looks really lovely. And yeah, what a journey. I love it so much. I was weaving in the ends of this. I, to be honest, I still have quite a, probably a quarter of the way, a quarter left to do. So I've done, I've done three fourths. Is that right? <laughs> I've done three fourths of the weaving in um, already. So I'm eager to do more and to wear it outside on a walk. So I'm looking forward to doing that this coming week. So yeah, finished object. Now let's chat about what to cast on next. Oh, but first a whip update. Let me grab my sock. Last week, I decided to cast on a sock because uh, I was nearing the completion of my sweater and I wanted something uh, just light and easy to do as a palette cleanser and something fun. And it was so much fun to uh, go through my stash back here and choose out some yarn. I chose some yellow yarn to start the uh, Rainbow Chronicles from uh, April onward, um, which is hosted by uh, So Sweet Violet, uh, and I'm totally forgetting, but I'll have all of the information up here and down below in the description as well. Um, and I chose this beautiful single ply yarn by uh, Plies and Hellhounds in her Roly Poly colorway, which is a Beatrix Potter colorway. I have no idea if she has this in her shop right now. This is from a couple of years ago. So, and uh, probably one, I think one or two people were like, why are you making socks out of single ply yarn? <laughs> it's gonna pill. I am making these for my mom. These are gonna be bed socks essentially and just home socks. So she's not gonna be out and about walking in them. And I just wanted to make something sunny and really cozy and comfortable for her. So here it is. There was a journey with this pattern. I'm using um, the Sweet Vanilla, uh, I think it's called Sweet Vanilla Sock Pattern, Toe Up Sock Pattern by Jules Hill of So Sweet Violet as well. This stitch marker is by, is from my pal Denise of Earth Tones Girl. I love it so much. It says, do more of what makes you happy. So it's a great reminder. And so Jules for this pattern uses the beanie, her beanie toe, which is a rounded toe, which I've never done before. That was where the journey <laughs> was. And uh, she has um, a particular heel as well um, that I'm really eager to try too. So I'm using Magic Loop. I decided to do 2.5 millimeter needles. I initially cast on with 2.25 millimeter needles, which is my usual go-to for socks. But I went up a needle size because of the single ply um, and it needed just a little bit of a bigger needle um, since it's a slightly thinner yarn than the usual fingering weight yarn, at least this, this one is. Uh, and I wanted it to be a little bit of a cozier, like looser sock as well, since they're more bed socks anyway. So I'm gonna show you some pictures here because my toe initially did not look like this, which is, this is how it's supposed to look. It looked so weird and I was like, what is happening? <laughs> and this was a real indication of vaccination anxiety and like shop updates, you know, anxiety, natural anxiety, and just was, I was not paying attention to the pattern. I thought, well, am I like using the wrong needle size? Is it the single ply yarn? I was, I even ended up casting on with some scrap, um, plied yarn that I have up here. I have like a little growing collection <laughs> of scrap, um, plied yarn from other fingering weight projects 
and it was still turning out. It looked like jowls. It looked like it was so weird. And I was on a Zoom call and I just was counting and I was like, my counts are right. So I don't know what's happening. I looked at the pattern again. I kept looking back at the pattern. And finally I looked at the very beginning of the pattern where it says do uh, Judy's, Jenny's magic cast on. I always say Judy or Jenny. I always can't ever remember. But, um, and I realized where I had gone wrong. I was putting the total amount of stitches, number of stitches on each needle. So I was doubling up the number of stitches. <laughs> and I wasn't doing enough increase rounds, therefore, and so it was a hot mess. So once I figured that out and cast on the correct number of stitches, we were in business. So I'm really enjoying it. I just tried it on myself. I pretty much have the same size um, feet as my mom. She has slightly bigger feet after she had her kiddos. <laughs> um, but it fits really well. It's very different. I'm so used to more of a kind of square, kind of square toe when you try it on. Um, but I'm really liking this. So I'm eager for her to try it on when I see her uh, in a couple of weeks here, week and a half. Um, to see how she likes it, but it's really fun to try something new and to kind of, you know, once again, learn lessons <laughs> of knitting, say, mm, you're, 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 you need to slow down, <laughs> you need to pay attention here. So, but I love the color and I love this yarn. I love knitting with single ply yarn. It is, I just, I love it. I have, I think I have a shawl out of single ply yarn which is really beautiful for like really um something that you need like a really lovely drape so again it's not typical for socks but in this case it's pretty fun what to cast on next. Yes, I am doing this sock for funsies, but I do have other knitting and sewing goals as well. So I'm actually going to be casting on some green socks because now it is May and so green is the color for the Rainbow Sock Chronicles this month. So I'm going to pick out some yarn sometime this week after I get all of the shop orders out into the mail to you all and I'm going to be test knitting a beautiful sock uh, by my friend Denise who I mentioned before Earth Tones Girl so I look forward to sharing that with you um, and then I, I think I'm going to do like some shorty socks so yeah which will be and I might keep those for me we'll see we'll see what happens <laughs> I always say that but then I end up giving them to my mom and then I am going to cast on my next sweater project but really it's a tank top so we are having a impromptu loosey-goosey informal really fun uh sweater make-along year-long sweater make-along over in our Ravelry group um it is just something that when I was sharing that uh in my January 2021 goals that I wanted to make uh, more garments for myself more sweaters t-shirts couple of tank tops in there as well a lot of people wanted to join in too and you all have and it is wonderful I urge you to go check out the Ravelry group if it if Ravelry is um, user friendly for you but we are also sharing and tagging over on Instagram as well so yes so my next is going to be actually a tank top because I do have some t-shirt uh, sweaters or short sleeve sweaters that I wanna make, um, but mine is gonna be a tank top because I know it'll be a quick knit and I kinda want something like super quick to make. That's a famous, <laughs> famous last words. Uh, and that's gonna be the Keen Wonder. I think that's how you say it. Keen Wonder, Keen Wonder. And this is by Megan Kelly. I've had this in my queue for some time. And I just love the texture and the shaping of this tank. It's beautiful, beautiful. It is with a DK weight yarn. Uh, and I'm on the hunt for some DK weight. I really like to make it with some organic, co uh, organic cotton 
And so I know that there's some fingering weight or some worsted different kind of brands out there, but DK is a little bit different. So I'm, I need to do some more research. And first and foremost, I'm really trying to uh, buy local yarns first. Um, so I'm going to take a look there. Yeah, I'm really excited to cast that on. So stay tuned for that. And then, um, oh, and then I just wanted to highlight, I'm looking at my iPad down here. Um, <laughs> this was a hot topic of conversation with some of my friends earlier today and yesterday too as well is that Pom Pom Quarterly has shown previews of their patterns for their summer issue which is going to be coming out pretty soon and I have a new sweater to add to my queue and that is the Load Star by Kirsten Rovetta. It is beautiful it's very vintage looking um kind of like the puffed sleeves a little bit um but i love the um i don't know what you would call that just kind of lace work essentially on um, the yoke of the sweater and oh it just looks really really classic and something that i can envision wearing um to meetings whenever i go, return to the city which we we don't know when we're, we'll be returning to work quite yet but yeah it's definitely something i could see myself wearing to work um to special occasions and out and about as well but it's no it's no walking sweater like my beloved tender sweater but yeah and there's some other um there's some other tank tops i think in there as well and some crop tops too which aren't usually my preference but they're really they're really really cute uh, and good stash busters as well this chat about cast ons is also making me really want to start sewing and also cross stitching as well there's something about the warmer months that make me want to pick up those two types of crafts again i'm really looking forward to making some staples uh sewing wise uh, for my wardrobe that i can wear with this sweater or some knitted namely with some knitted t-shirts and stuff that i want to make in the coming months and then cross stitch i've seen some cro people cross stitching lately and I just am really craving to pick up some of my lingering whips again. I haven't just really wanted to cross stitch for some time. It's not as much of a focus as knitting is this year for whatever reason. Um, but just recently I'm kind of itching to, to get back to it. So I'm looking forward to picking that up again uh, probably this month and to sharing it with you all. But that's going to do it for this episode, for this vlog this week. It is a shorty. I always say that and then after I edit it, it isn't quite as short as I think. But I think this week it actually is a little bit of a shorty. It's just one of those, one of those weeks. But momentous also because a finished sweater and pulling out this one and getting the <laughs> ends woven in finally a year on. Um, having a new cast on, which it's been a long time since I had a new cast on and learning new things and troubleshooting. It, the sweater, the tender sweater was, I keep looking at it, but it's right here. It's like calling my name. I love it so much. But it definitely was pretty smooth sailing the majority of this project. Only a few hiccups here and there, but nothing like that isn't out of the norm. So I feel very lucky with this one. But I'm going to call it an end to this vlog and I will see you all next Sunday. So have a wonderful week and I'll see you soon. Bye.